Hi, I'm Rob Byrne, a field strategist at One Identity. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, identity and governance administration, privileged account management, as as we see it, uh, particularly as it relates to the, the modern cloud-centric world. So a world where uh, enterprises have this cloud-first uh, approach. Well, what's the impact on, on these two spheres and, and how do we see that? So um, let's revisit uh, IT security in this context um, and remind ourselves what it looks like. Uh, and it allows us to understand then the place that identity governance administration and privileged account management take in, in, in the modern world. So IT security has got layers. Um, here's a user, he's going to access uh, some of our business applications, some of our data, and uh, he's going to follow some business process. If he's a malicious user, he may not follow our process, he may follow his own nefarious process. Okay, so let's watch what happens as he moves through the layers. He's going to cross the perimeter of our networks and systems. He'll go across, uh, you know, denial of service, perhaps uh, defenses, uh, you know, he'll traverse firewalls. He'll get the platform level security, around encryption, authentication. Um, hopefully the platform is well managed with endpoint management software, so it's well patched and up to date. Um, at the application layer, he'll be challenged for authentication, perhaps multi-factor. Um, he'll be authorized in terms of the entitlements he has access to. And as he moves through the layers, we're going to audit and monitor his activities and his actions to make sure uh, that we have a track of that so that we can fulfill our compliance obligations and perhaps use it in forensics. Now, if this user is actually a malicious user and he's gained access to our systems, we have a breach. And unfortunately, the numbers are not good on breaches. The numbers and the statistics, and actually some first principle thinking, will tell you that it's highly likely that your organization has been or, or will be breached in some way uh, in the future. So the response to that, of course, it's a little bit depressing, um, uh, but we need to be resilient in the face of that, and we need to put robust uh, policy and, and systems in place to protect it. So the reaction, the only sensible reaction in the modern world is to say, I'm going to build my systems to be robust in the face of breaches. And I'm going to try to contain those breaches and limit the damage that those malicious users can cause if they do get access uh, to my systems. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to follow some well-known, I would say, good practices um, that continue to apply in this, in this you know, cloud-centric world. So we're going to focus on securing privileged accounts, the accounts that can do most mm -hmm. harm. We're going to get our, finally get our identity lifecycle and account lifecycle in order so that um, we uh, can, uh, you know, manage access as users come and go, and particularly as they go. So we're going to ensure that we have good account hygiene. Uh, we don't have accounts lying around that could be compromised. We are going to put access, ongoing access governance in place. Um, it's not a one-shot thing, you know, uh, we're going to have ongoing process. We're going to attract those logs and audits and manage them in the right way. Um, and we're going to uh, benefit from technology from our um, uh, artificial intelligence colleagues. Uh, and we're going to apply that to user behavior to help us drill down into anomalous behaviors and focus on those events that are particularly risky. Now, that's what we, in any case, at one identity mean by identity and access management. And this good practice will keep us um, as safe as we can be in this world where, you know, the perimeter of our enterprise essentially dissolved. Um, we live in a very distributed world with a, with a highly, a big variety of user types, internals, externals, and so on. These are the good practices that are gonna keep us safe over time. Now, at One Identity, we would recommend when you start down this process and you review your, your uh, IT landscape, that you start with uh, the directories, the core directories that are, are key for your authentication services. Um, why? Because that's the gateway to your applications and systems. Then expand out into a wider identity governance administration uh, work so that you can bring other applications into the fold and all the time keeping an eye on those privileged accounts that exist across all those systems. Now, um, 
it certainly makes sense in a cloud-first world that some of those security services themselves will run in the cloud. Um, and just switching to a one identity centric view there, you can see uh, switching to product names that, that there are technologies available um, to help you uh, in all those different domains. So uh, you can really get that sort of joined up, um, you know, end to end security that you need to secure those digital identities. Um, the digital identity as the focus for security is pretty well established principle, I think at this point, um, you cannot have a digital transformation without a strong notion of what your digital identities are. And you certainly cannot secure that, that, that those digitalized, um, you know, uh, IT assets uh, without a strong notion and uh, security around your, your digital identities. Now, if we drill into, um, you know, our identity governance platform, I think it's a, you know, a traditional identity, centralized identity governance platform, very comprehensive, terribly complete. And what I would say in the context of the cloud is that whether it's the authoritative system running in the cloud, whether it's the target system running in the cloud, whether it's the governance platform itself running in a cloud-based form factor, uh, all of these things are, are um, can be uh, consumed in a cloud way, and they're, they're cloud ready, as we're gonna see. So connect very much connectivity for the cloud, in the cloud, uh, we have over 40 connectors uh, focused on cloud systems, and uh, we add to that all the time. Um, the form factors, as I say, cloud ready, containerized uh, components that can be integrated with your favorite uh, orchestration engine, be it Azure Pipeline or, or Amazon Technologies or Octopus or whatever it is, uh, you know, the Kubernetes system can exploit all these things to for rapid deployment of, of, of these systems. Uh, turning to the privileged account management side and just asking ourselves again and reviewing that question in the context of this new cloud, cloudy world, uh, what is a privileged account? Well, it turns out that you find privileged accounts everywhere from the industrial system, you know, boxes that you've got uh, running your factories through traditional operating systems, through cloud platforms, all the way up to our uh, social media and brand management, uh, you know, essentially brand management uh, software from an enterprise point of view. And I was uh, quite interested to read in the integration documentation for one of these industrial systems, you know, they're reminding us, hey, you really should secure this box. But really very much what, what struck me was this recognition that uh, of the importance that securing these privileged accounts is taking in our society. Um, in, a, in a world where you know, our electoral systems, our critical infrastructure, water, electricity, you know, the cars we drive, all have, are essentially computer systems that require uh, you know, very significant uh, security controls uh, around them. Um, uh, it, it's no longer well. Oh, um, you know, I've got a business outage around Teams or Azure. That's kind of, or um, Excel. You know, it's kind of inconvenient. It's actually getting to the stage where uh, you know some of these IoT devices are, are getting to the point where um, failure to secure them can actually be a matter of literally life and and, and death. So what do these uh, systems look like that help us secure the privileged accounts? They can be hardware appliances, always reassuring to put your hand on some, you know, some metal. Um, um, hard to walk out through the lobby of the enterprise with this under your shoulder or with the keys to the kingdom. So that's nice. Of course, they can be virtualized as well. And they certainly come with all kinds of, uh, these days, nice workflow to ensure that business users can easily interact with them and, and get uh, the access they need. Now, uh, beyond securing the passwords, of course, we may want to secure uh, the sessions. So actually watch what you do then with that password. Um, and um, there's many advantages, advantages to, to a session management, uh, notably the fact that we can record the session for forensics, but equally keeping that central control, if we do detect an anomaly or an alert, we can cut that session short uh, straight away in response to that alert, um, it, wherever it comes from. And that includes uh, sessions that are accessing cloud platforms on-premise or cloud applications. So we're fully covered there. And then looping back to that connection between identity uh, governance and, and, and privileged accounts, what is it? Well, we would want to govern 
those systems that are controlling access to the privileged accounts. I mean, it's it's a you know it's an obvious thing. Um, certainly, you can work on a priority basis. You can do a modular basis, uh, and you can attack the project that makes most sense first. But we should be aiming to bring that uh, privileged account system, account management system under governance so that we can really have it joined up uh, full full layers of security ar ar around those systems. And, and, and one of the advantages we do enjoy at One Identity and our customers enjoy is that that integration is, is provided, of course, out of the box. So um, uh, moving on from that, I just wanted to mention like uh, one particular cloud uh, system or vendor our platform, uh, which is the Microsoft Azure platform, it is, uh, I would call it the elephant in the cloud, um, you know, a very important system. And One Identity is a primary partner of Microsoft in terms of moving customers to the cloud and helping them secure uh, their estate in the cloud. And I just wanted to call that out and explain what, how that what that looks like and how we do complement uh, the Microsoft platform. Um, this is Microsoft. Uh, you've got a couple of directories. Uh, you've got some very nice, uh, obviously, applications. This presentation is being recorded with Teams. So, you know, very present uh, everywhere. And that's good. Uh, you're going to have, um, you know, other business, non Microsoft business applications, of course, but they can be integrated into the Azure family or fold through the mechanism of enterprise applications. And in that world, Microsoft, from a security point of view, have got you well covered um, by, by providing authentication, uh, multi-factor, uh, risk user-based uh, behavior analysis, you know, context-sensitive um, access to applications through the cloud, uh, security features they've got, information governance and so on. So it's all really good. And it's a rather rosy picture, which, which is great. Um, and customers love it, and and we at Quest uh, certainly a big consumer of of those services. The thing is, and the point I want to make is that uh, you will undoubtedly have other operating systems, other uh, databases, other directories, other business applications, other boxes like mainframes running in the cellar, other cloud platforms, other business applications that are not uh, currently integrated into the Azure world. I may never be integrated for perhaps business reasons. Uh, I mean, from Microsoft's point of view, uh, does it really make sense to provide top-notch security for uh, competitor uh, business vendors or business platform vendors? Uh, probably not. Um, so the picture uh, is is not quite as rosy as as we would like as the security uh, you know professionals in in companies because. There's kind of a large area or segment that the, the empire, the Microsoft empire doesn't quite extend to. However, there's good news there, and that is that we, uh, our technologies uh, have got you covered. So the first step, as I mentioned, uh, prioritizing uh, securing the directories, uh, we have you covered there. You can provide that one view onto those directories. You can extend that out to the Unix estate by providing uh, Active Directory bridging, of course, all your different types of, of Unix. And then as you move into the IGA world, uh, the enterprise wide view, we've, we've got you covered there. So there's really very much a mosaic uh, of, of security offerings here that give you that final full covering across your whole enterprise. And we see it very much as, as complementing what Microsoft, the great job that Microsoft are doing securing their systems. Um, and, and as I say, we're a primary uh, partner of Microsoft, including, you know, moving uh, and managing customers' uh, systems in, in, in the, on the Microsoft platform. So uh, PAM, of course, is, is, is there as well. Microsoft PAM offering is restricted to the Azure platform itself, and we've got you covered for the whole enterprise. Now, um, I just want to finish uh, by calling out some points around one identity. We are focused on security. We do have a wider portfolio of products than some niche vendors uh, in the market. And we are a nice company to work with. We do have good ratings from our customers and, and support. And we do have an extensive partner network. And with that, um, um, I uh, will leave you. Um, and I look forward to running into you in person, uh, perhaps working with you in the future.